everyone. We wanted to come and start out a little different today. And so what we're gonna start with is a couple crafts. They're really simple ones, but first of all, I invited Berkeley to help me today. She's one of my daughters, and so she's gonna come along and help me through this. So are you, are you ready for this? Yes. Okay, so our first craft is just, all you need is some rocks. You can find rocks around your neighborhood, maybe around your yard, uh, maybe someone collects rocks in your house and you have some laying around. Simple and easy, and they don't have to be any certain size, whatever you want to do. And then some paint, we got some different color paints. And then at our house, we had some glitter. You don't need glitter, but I think everything's better with glitter, so we use some glitter. Um, these are the glitter ones that we did today. Berkeley, I think, actually did this one, did you? Yes. Berkeley did this one. And then um, here's another one that we did today, and we actually wrote a word on it that says praying. So you can use these rocks. They were thinking about maybe setting them on our neighbor's doorstep. And um, here's another. This one was really cool. I like that one. Did you like that yes. one? Um, it's a kind of, it has three crosses on it, and it's kind of like a sunset. So you can do whatever you want. You can make them however you want. And again, this one down here has some little flowers put on it. So all you need, Berkeley is doing kind of, it looks like a rainbow effect. So your first layer you need to paint and you need to make sure you're going to let it dry if you're going to write on it. So it's like this one. We let this layer dry. Once it's dry, you could take a Sharpie, a marker, or maybe some paint, and then you just take the brush. And this first word says miss, and I was going to write miss you. So like if you wanted to give it to a friend or a neighbor, and you can write miss you. And then you could take other paint brushes, say it says miss you, draw some flowers on it, maybe set it on your neighbor's doorstep, whatever. There is no rules to this, you just have fun. My kids had fun, it was all ages. I have to be honest with you, this one my teenager even did. So it takes all ages. Lila did a bunch of glitter ones because she liked the glitter. It was simple, is it pretty simple and yes. easy to do? Didn't take us long. Berkeley likes the round shape um, rocks. She thought that was pretty cool. So. This will be a fun project for you to do. We picked it too because it's stuff that you probably just have around your house. So Berkeley, we're gonna put that one down and let's move to our second craft. Our second craft, Berkeley really likes this one too, is just as easy. And this is stuff that your mom and dad probably have around the house, but you need to make sure you ask them first before you do it, okay? So this takes cornstarch. This cornstarch was like 80 something cents at Walmart. And then conditioner. You don't need any special kind of conditioner. This one was literally 80, I think 88 cents at Walmart. They smell good too. Smell? That one's strawberry. Oh. So we made some earlier. Berkeley's got one here. What I love about this and how it's better than slime to me as a parent is it's just not as messy. Look, Berkeley, here you take some. It is not messy. It only takes two ingredients to make. It's cheap. It doesn't use any glue whatsoever. So all you need is one cup of the cornstarch. Pour that very easily because if you kind of throw it in, it poofs up. And like my shirt, it gets everywhere. One cup of cornstarch. And then we're going to use this strawberry one here. And then you fill a half a cup. Again, ask your mom and dad to help. And you put that in there together. And you just mix it. At some point, you might even get to use your hands on this if you want, but when you're first starting out, the cornstarch and the spoon together is the best way to go. So you just keep mixing it until it's all mixed together. And if you need, if you feel like it's too dry, you can add a little bit more of the conditioner or if it's too wet, you can add more cornstarch. So the more you mix it, the more it'll come together. We used on this, um, you could tell it's a different color. We use some food coloring. We've got another one over here. Let me show you. So obviously we use a blue food coloring on this one. And it was really fun to make. They smell good. Smell them. So this one was this one. And they smell really good. Keep them in baggies when you're done. Again, ask your mom and dad about it. But this is just simple stuff, not expensive. Stuff that you probably have around your house because we didn't want you to have to necessarily go out and buy the stuff. So it's just a lot of fun to play with. Lila, my kindergartner, has been playing with this this afternoon. They had a really good time. And again, even my teenagers were playing with it. So these are something just easy to do for you guys. 
We miss you all. We're excited to see you hopefully soon. And I wanted to tell you coming up next, our lesson is going to come from Miss Emily Hazlitt. She's our kindergarten teacher in the filling station. She's also one of our Greenville school teachers. She's amazing. Hope you'll enjoy listening to her. We're praying for you. And again, we miss you. And Berkeley, thank you for your help. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it because you're, you're pretty good at this. You're much better mm -hmm. at it than I am. So hope you have a good night and we'll talk to y'all later. Bye. All right, hey kiddos. So a lot of you know me because I had the privilege of being your kindergarten teacher um, in the fill-in station. But for any of you that don't know me, I am Miss Emily and I get to teach the kindergarten class, also known as the fill-in station. Uh, I miss seeing all of your cute little smiling faces, whether you're one of my kids right now or um, if you're in another class, I love getting high fives and hugs and smiles as you walk down the hall. I miss you and I hope you're doing well at home. I hope you had a great Easter with all of your families, getting to talk about Jesus and the resurrection. And so today, we're going to dive back in and talk more about the spiritual gifts that Miss Deborah started to talk to us about about two weeks ago. Okay, so she was talking about spiritual gifts and that first, in order for you to receive spiritual gifts from God, you first have to accept Jesus and his perfect gift of salvation into your heart. So you have to be a believer and follower of Jesus to be able to get the spiritual gifts God wants you to have. And then he wants you to use your gifts that he gives you to help other people, to love them, and ultimately so that you can tell them about Jesus and they can come to know him as well. So a couple weeks ago, Miss Deborah was up here and she was opening gifts and talking about them. She talked about gifts like giving, kindness, and serving others. So today we're going to go a little bit further and talk a little bit more about spiritual gifts. So the memory verse for this unit over spiritual gifts is 1 Corinthians 12, 4-5, and it says, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. So I hope you're taking time while you're at home to learn this awesome memory verse. It's telling us that everyone has different spiritual gifts. We have different ways we can serve and love other people, but we serve the same awesome God together using these gifts. So even though we have different gifts, we serve the same God. And I want you to start thinking right now, well, what is my spiritual gift? And I'm here to tell you that there are lots of different spiritual gifts and hopefully today as we get into our lesson um, and even the future lessons from here through some prayer and conversations with your family, you can maybe figure out what some of your spiritual gifts are. So the Bible tells us about different kinds of spiritual gifts. In Romans 12, 6 to 8, Paul tells us some of the spiritual gifts are serving, teaching, encouraging, giving, leading, and being kind. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10 adds to this list. There are also the gifts of giving godly advice or wisdom, having great faith, and even helping to heal people. So we're going to break these down a little bit more, and I'm going to give you some questions to think about for you to answer um, to see if you might can figure out what some of your spiritual gifts are. Now, some of you are not going to know how to answer any of these questions, maybe, or you're not going to, you know, necessarily understand all of them. And guess what? That's okay. Because the more and more you grow in the Lord, the more he's going to teach you. And then you're actually going to get to learn more and more about the spiritual gifts that he's given you. So sometimes it takes time and it takes growth and that's okay. So the first one that we are going to look at today is... The gift of serving. The gift of serving. If you have the gift of serving, that means you love to help people in any way you can. Do you love helping people with things they cannot do by themselves? Do you enjoy serving God at church by always welcoming the new kid in or helping clean up by putting up the chairs or cleaning away the trash? Do you enjoy helping your parents and siblings at home with chores like doing the dishes, throwing away the trash, picking up the house without your parents forcing you to do so? If you answer yes to these questions, you might just have the gift of serving. The next gift we're going to talk about is the gift of teaching. If you have the gift of teaching, that obviously means you love to teach others. 
Do you like helping your teacher at school or at church with the lesson? Do you enjoy telling and teaching your parents about all that you've learned? Do you maybe help teach your siblings when they need help with schoolwork? If you answer yes to these questions, you might just have the gift of teaching. The next one we're gonna talk about is the gift of encouraging. If you have the gift of encouraging, that means you are super supportive of people and all that they do. Do you enjoy telling your parents, your friends, your siblings that they're doing a great job? Do you like to also tell them how awesome they are? Do you love telling people, hey, you've got this, you can do it, even when they're trying to do something really hard? If you answer yes to these questions, you might just have the gift of encouraging. The next one we're gonna talk about is the gift of giving. If you have the gift of giving, that means you enjoy giving to others. Do you enjoy giving some of your money to the offering or missions at church? Do you often share and give your food and snacks to others at school or even your siblings at home? Do you simply enjoy giving whatever you can to anyone you think is in need? If you answer yes to these questions, then you might just have the gift of giving. The next one is the gift of leading. If you have the gift of leading, that means you like to be in charge. Do you like being team captain for games and giving your teammates their positions? Do you like to tell people how they can help when you're in a group together at school or at church? Do you always wanna be the line leader or help your teacher or parent? If you answered yes to some of these questions, then you might just have the gift of leading. The last one we're gonna talk about today is the gift of kindness. If you have the gift of kindness, that means you love helping other people and caring for them. When you see a friend or sibling who is sad, do you try to ask them how they are and how you can help them? Do you try to be a friend to the new kid at school or the new kid at church? Do you often try to help people that just look like they need a friend? If you answer yes to these questions, then you have the gift of kindness. So there are obviously lots of other spiritual gifts that we didn't talk about today. But these are some of the main ones I really want you to think about and pray about and see if these might be some of the gifts that God has given you and is growing in you the more you get to know him. If you didn't know how to answer any of these questions and you feel a little lost, do not worry. Like I said before, the more and more you get to know Jesus and grow in him, the more and more that these gifts will become a lot more obvious to you. For example, I have the gifts of teaching and kindness. Now, when I was really young, like kindergarten or first grade, I knew I had the gift of teaching because I wanted to be the teacher. I wanted to help the teacher at school or at church. Whenever I would get home, I would always try to teach my parents and my sister everything I learned. So I knew I loved teaching and it was a gift God gave me. But the other gift, the gift of kindness, I didn't know I had that gift until I was in middle school and even on into high school. There were lots of opportunities where God just really wanted me to be nice to the new kid at school or a kid that had never been to our church class before. And after more and more opportunities came, I finally realized it was a gift that God was giving me. It was something that I was good at. So if you don't think you know some of your gifts right now, that's okay. I just want you to think about them and maybe even practice some of them while you're stuck at home with your family and your siblings. Another little piece of advice as we wrap up here is not just the spiritual gifts here, but you all know the fruits of the spirit, probably because I made you sing the fruits of the spirit song every single week when you were in my class. So remember the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. While you're trying to think of your spiritual gifts, also be practicing the fruits of the Spirit. Practice loving your family. Practice being patient when you don't get what you want. There are tons of ways you can practice these things, even if you're not 100% sure what some of your gifts are. So that's what we have for today. So I'm going to close this with a quick word of prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to get to be able to come and teach these awesome kids. I pray that you would be with every single child, that they would just know how loved they are by their teachers at church, by their families. Um, I just pray that you would keep them all safe. 
um, during this time, and we just pray that you would continue to take care of us um, during this quarantine, Lord, and to teach us about our spiritual gifts and how to use them to best love you and love other people. And we just thank you for all the things you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's what we have on spiritual gifts today. Miss Emily loves all of you, and I hope you will have a great week. But he brought me in Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Who the sun